All right, guys, so uh, level up training today. We're going to be pulling some topics from those of you guys here on the call. So I asked you guys to write in the chat, what are some of the things that are working for you, where your strengths at, and what are some of the weaknesses that you have or some things that you need to follow up on um, or that you would like some more training in or coaching or would you like to grow in? So let's see, Jessica wrote down strength and content creating. Weakness is follow-up. Um, Carla wrote, working. What's working for her? Negotiations, clean offer, setting expectations with buyers before putting an offer. Need improvement on refining my process from under contract to close or after close. Miles wrote down, I need to get better at calling. I don't have anything down yet. Manny wrote, work on believing in our scripts. Believing in our scripts. Uh, Brenda, really good at booking appointments and showings, improving negotiations and converting. Lauren, strength, outside networking, weakness is scripts. Okay. All right, let's pick from this. Um, those of you guys that just jumped on, drop something in the chat. What are your strengths in this business? Or what do you feel you're good at? What do you feel is working? What do you feel your strengths are? And where do you feel you need some improvement on or some help in? Um, okay, I'm gonna call on Jessica. Jessica wrote, she, she has strength in creating uh, content, content creation and her weakness is follow-up. Um, yes. Jessica, when you say strength in content creating, what do you mean by that? Like um, everything is content. So like I, every single time I come across a news article or like a post, I would save it and then try to make a script on it. And then I was, I'm more diligent on um, recording too. Got it. So you're comfortable with, with recording, with making stuff, with coming up with content and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. And like, I know what to do to, um, to kind of promote my post so everyone could see it. Got it. Okay. And your weakness is follow up. Uh, is it just that you don't know what to say when you follow up or are you just not following up enough or? I think it's kind of both where I wasn't utilizing PowerPoint as much, but now I am. And because of Zillow, I made a campaign for myself where I have tasks already pre-made, so I don't have to remember what I have to do next. So even for the most simplest thing, like callback for LP Mama, I put that in the campaign so like I th nothing falls through the crack type of thing. And then uh, that's what I've been implementing last week because I was on Zillow. So that's been helping me with following up, but the thing is, it's just the script part where like, I don't know what to say. Like uh, with Tom Ferry, they're like, oh, don't just say, just want to follow up. But this isn't like LP Mama follow up. It's like after showing follow up. Got it. Okay. So you've already showed a home or you've already spoken to this client. Now you got to follow up to kind of see next steps or try to convert them or kind of push them down the funnel. Okay. Yeah. Usually so, I'm really good about like setting the appointment there and then, but like on like some occasions where I can't set a buyer consultation, that's where my, my stumble is on. Like, how do I convert it afterwards? Got it. If okay. Um, so let's address that right now. Cause I think that's probably something that a lot of people may run into, right? Like, what do I say? Like, do I just call people and say, hey, I'm just checking in, see if you're still looking to buy or, buy or sell a home, right? Like that's that's probably what would come to most people's mind, just a simple check-in. And, and honestly, that works. Like if you do that enough times, you're going to get someone, right, that responds. But when you call someone and just say, hey, I'm just checking in to see if you want to buy or sell a home, there's not a lot of value there, right? So what I would do if I were you is I would think of what is valuable to that client at that time, depending on, on who they are or where they're at in the process. So 
if it's a client that you've shown homes to already and you maybe they didn't find the right home, before you follow up with them, maybe look for some homes, right? Like just do a quick little search and see if there's any new homes that popped on the market that may fit their criteria and have that to share with them. This way, you're not just calling to follow up and say like, hey, when do you want to go look at homes? Or hey, do you still want to buy or sell? You can say, hey, John, uh, it's Jessica just checking in. I actually just saw these two homes that, you know, one of them looks really nice. You know, I know you were looking for something with a big backyard. This one has a great backyard. They just reduced the price. It's in the area. And I wanted to share this home with you um, because I think it might be a good fit. Um, here's the link to that home. You know, go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. That's a lot different than like, hey, John, just checking in and see if you're still looking to buy or sell a home. Right. So I think part of a good follow up strategy is just coming up with something that would be valuable to someone the same way that you are good at creating content. Like that could be part of your follow up strategy. Right. So if, if you see a good article that you're going to use for content, use that article as part of your follow up. Right. Like, hey, John, I just came across this this, you know, this article about what's happening in the market right now. And um, they actually talked about this, this and that. And I thought, you know, I should share this with you because I know this is probably going to be important when you're deciding to buy or sell a home. I wanted to, you know, check in with you. Um, you know, here's the information or here's the link to that article. Enrique, can I, can I just touch on that real quick? So, yeah. um, and not to speak for Hervin or Deliri, but like, you know, I've, they're my friends and like, I, I see what they do with some of the clients we've worked with. Their follow-up is exactly like that, right? Like if it's not Hervin, it's it's been Deliri that will send the home and just check in like, hey, just wanted to see how you're doing. Here's a home I thought you may, you know, you may like or some something like that. And it goes to show with like what they're able to do, what they've been able to do like so far this year. Yeah. So it, it's, it's because, right, like that's the easy, like if you're not putting no effort into it, then you can't really expect to get like a good result from that follow up if you're just checking in. Right. Like if it's just a check in. Um, you have to give someone what they want, right? So if it's a seller, then they probably want to know about the home that just sold down the street because that may affect their property value, right? So if I'm following up with the seller, I'd be like, I'd be like, hey, Thomas, it's Enrique. You know, we met a couple months back. I know you were thinking about selling your home. I actually have some good news. There's a home down the street that's almost like yours that just sold for like 100,000 over the asking price. Did you get a chance to see that one? It's on 123 Main Street. I thought this would, you know, be some valuable information because it shows that the market is actually picking up, right? Uh, let me know when we can jump on a call and I'll, I'll, I'll share that information with you. Or here's the link to that home. Um, are there any updates on your plans? You know, that's easier. That's way better than like, hey, just check it in and see if you're still looking to, to sell, you know, this summer, right? So, because you got to understand that a lot of agents are, contacting the same clients, right? So what's going to make you stand out from the other agent? It's having that extra little piece of information or extra piece of value because you took you took some time and it doesn't take a lot of time, right? Like a quick little search, a quick little comp check, pull up Redfin or what'd you learn in, in our meeting this week or where are the interest rates at, right? Like Yesenia just posted where the interest rates are at today. So that's a perfect opportunity to maybe follow up with someone who thought the rates were too high a couple months ago, right? Hey, John, I wanted to follow up with you. I just got out of a meeting with my, my lender and the rates actually went down. They're at, they're at, you know, in the mid fours. I remember when we talked two months ago, they were in the sixes and that was one of your concerns. I'm not sure if you're aware that the rates came down, you know, when can we jump back on a call or when can we see where you stand today? Something like that, right? So just come from a place of giving value and use that as your equation, right? Like when I follow up, what value am I going to give this client? Instead of asking for something, what am I giving them? All right, so it, it doesn't take that long. It just takes the extra little push. So I think uh, I learned this from um, from Kevion. Anybody know who Kevion is? Case Real Estate, any of you guys follow him? Down South, does a lot of luxury properties. He built his business off of door knocking. And uh, I actually uh, did a coaching, a coaching thing with him for like three months. He was coaching me. And a big thing that he talked about was when he got, when he goes to door knock any door, 
before he approaches that door, he always has something of value that he's going to share, like a talking point or something that he's going to share with that person instead of just like cold door knocking people. So he'll always show up to the house and like, hey, you know, when they answer, hey, I'm just a local realtor. We just sold that one down the street or I'm not sure if you know, but that one just sold down the street. It went for this much over asking. It went for this. And that gets people opening up to you instead of like, hey, I'm just seeing if you're looking to, to sell your home, right? Um, is that helpful, Jessica? Okay, and then the other thing too is, is you got to create like, uh, you got to do things in a way that's going to make it fun for you. So like, Jessica, you like being in front of the camera or you like putting out content and stuff like that. Maybe doing video, like for all your follow-ups personalized we video, video texts. we do yeah. video texts. it's just the we do send homes out every week for them it's just um i the whole providing value thing like besides sending out homes um we did talk about like sending videos out the videos that we make but then it just went over my head until now but i'm i'm not even talking about like the videos you make uh because the ones you guys do are more like the fully produced with the green screen and all that. I'm talking about just a, a personal. We also do video text. Yeah, personal video text with the actual talking point. Mm -hmm. um, and then sending homes is a lot like putting people on a search through Firepoint. It's a, you know, it's a lot different than you actually picking out a home and you calling them and saying, hey, I just saw this home. Not just sending it to their email and thinking like they're going to open it up. Um, but a, a video text of like, Hey, I just saw this home. I remember you wanted a backyard. You wanted it to be, you know, in this school, school district, whatever it might be. Um, because that now shows like, Hey, this agent is in tune with what I want. Like this agent was listening. This agent is now hand selecting properties for me. Um, you know, so it's just how you package it up. You're packaging it up a lot different when you're doing it that way versus just putting someone on a, on a home search. And it's, think about this guys, like if you have like a, a client where like it's a good price point, a million, 1.5, 2 million, 3 million, um, it's worth your time to do that extra lay work to hand select properties for them and to like custom, you know, send them one by one, like, hey, this one might fit your needs. What do you think about this one? Or hey, hey, Thomas, what do you think about this backyard? You know, I know you guys are looking for something with the pool. I saw this one. I thought about you. What do you think about the backyard? And if you even send that in a video text, that even, that takes it even further. Um, all right, so hopefully you got some ideas on that, some little tweaks, right? A lot of times what I want you guys to take away, guys, is we're doing a lot of things that are, that are good, right? A lot of good things. Sometimes it's just these small little tweaks to how you're doing it that's gonna make an impact on your, on your business, right? The small little lever, the small little tweak that you that you do where you add this to your arsenal and now your results increase dramatically. Um, I need to get better at calling. Miles said, I need to get better at calling and I don't have anything down yet. Miles, uh, unmute yourself real quick, brother. Explain to me what you mean by that. Better at calling. Uh, I just need to just actually just make the calls. I'm still like learning the fire point on, on where to um, make the calls, like who to call. Okay. But I just need to just make them. Yeah. That's like I'm working on, on like, you know, people I know right now a lot more, but I, I know I just need to, to jump on the phone a lot more too. Yeah. So with that, man, it's it, like you said, it's all about just making the calls, right? Like it's going to take, if you've never made calls before, you're going to have to make a lot of calls and mess a bunch up before you get good. Mm -hmm. Right. And that applies to everything. So my advice to you would just be, don't worry so much about like how to learn FirePoint And like, if you're doing that the right way, I would just focus on how many people do I need to call per day? Right. Like my goal today is I came in the office. I need to call. I need to do 50 dials and I need to at least talk to, you know, 20 people or whatever it might be. Right. Come up with your metric. Like 
for me to leave and feel like I got, I checked something off the list. This is how many people I need to speak to and practice my script on. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Cause I think sometimes we get too caught up in like, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing firepoint the right way? Am I calling the right people? You'll figure that part out as you go. Just pick up the phone, bro. That's, that's it. Right. Yep. And, um, and try new things on each call. That's the other thing too, right? Like this is your time when you're making the call, like try one script and then maybe tweak it a little bit or like actually think how did that call go? And then maybe tweak it a little bit and try it a little bit different on the next call, right? Maybe tweak the intro. Yeah, on the way here this morning, I was listening to uh, to Tom Ferry to one of his podcasts and he was saying, take two different scripts and use each of them 10 times and see yeah. which one works out the best and then go with that one. Yes. See which one comes off more natural. And then, you know, the other thing too, is just trying to be as natural as possible, right? Like the script is, is just an outline, right? But you got to say it in your own words. You got to make it come off natural. You got to talk how you would talk, you know, and just do your, the same way you would connect with someone at a barbecue or at a, you know, when you're cutting hair or whatever, it, it'd be the same way. You know what I mean? You're just talking about something different. Yep. You know, and right now, since this is, I think the problem, like a lot of times we have is when we're brand new, we still don't have, our vocabulary is not that big yet, right? We still don't have a bunch of stuff that we can talk about. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is just stay in my lane, like the stuff that you do know, just stay in your lane, right? Like, don't try to go off and talk about something very complicated, because then you're going to get into like some waters that you can't really handle. Yeah. Yeah. So until you like get the, the knowledge, just keep it real simple. So like any of you guys who are, who are newer to calling, if you have like a limited vocabulary uh, or a limited knowledge, I would just identify what are the opportunities right now, guys? The opportunities right now are there's more homes to choose from, right? We're getting some better deals, right? There's more negotiation right now. The rates were up. Now they're back. Now they've come down, right? The rates are in the fours right now, in the mid fours. Uh, you know, so I would talk about those things. Hey, John, this is Miles, PRG Real Estate. Hey, looks like you went on our website a couple months back. Just checking in. I'm not sure if you heard, but the rates went down, you know. We're now seeing some more competitive rates. Or we're now seeing some more opportunities. We're getting a lot of buyers, a lot better deals. Um you know, did you guys end up buying a property or where are you at with that? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get some feedback. And then from there, you just kind of take the conversation. But if you were to just do that same, like just basic kind of pitch yeah. 20 to 30 times in a day, you know, after a couple of weeks, you're going to, it's going to come off so smooth, you know, where you, you got it down. Yeah. So you got to just put the reps in. Any questions, man? No. All right. So my question to you, Miles, is uh, how many, what's your, what's your minimum that you got to hit today? Like how many people do you need to talk to? Uh, I haven't even set one. So let's set that right now. What do you think is a realistic, how long are you going to be in the office today? And what do you think is a realistic goal for how many people you should make contact with? Um, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I'm going to say 20 today. Okay. 20. That's realistic. 20, you can knock that out, you know, in, a, in an hour or two, just going through the pond. And when I, when we say contacts, this is like people you actually talk to, they pick up, you talk to them, yep. get a sheet and just start telling them up 20. Enrique, I was listening to this uh, podcast. I think Ed Milet was talking about it. Yeah. And he was like, if you're new in business or you're struggling with leads, he was like, dude, just call people. Like, cause a lot of people are afraid to sound too salesy, right? Like salesy, yeah. I think we all like can agree with that, but he's like, look, like when you call someone, like, you know, if you're calling your cousin or your friend, whoever it is, just get straight to the point. Like, hey, how are you doing? I don't want to take too much of your time, but, you know, I'm actually calling about business today. Um, you know, I'm working on my, you know, working on my clients or whatever it is, right? I want to prioritize my friends and family. Do you happen to know anyone that's looking to buy or sell real estate or anybody that I can help out? Like, oh, no, not right now, but at least you're planting that seed, right? And I think that's like super simple. Like, I know Thomas is in here doing that right now, but like, I think that's a real easy conversation to have. Like, hey, all right, cool, thanks. But you know what? Have a great day. Like, if, you know, I'll talk to you soon. Just grab coffee next week or something. You know. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. In the beginning of that, that's, that's great advice, Thomas. In the beginning of this business, like you're trying to build a pipeline, right? So you're trying to plant as many seeds as possible out there. And you're not necessarily going to get someone that says, oh yeah, right now, today, it's a com it's talking to a bunch of people, planting seeds, and then you're, you're trying to create leads and trying to create momentum. You may get someone that says, yeah, I am looking to buy, but you know, I'm busy right now. Can you call me back tomorrow? Or can you call me back on Thursday? And then now you have a lead, right? It went from a contact to you have a lead and someone that you can call back. And you may call them back on Thursday and they may say, oh man, you know, I know you call, I know I told you to call me Thursday. Um, can you call me back in an hour? Boom. And you got to call them back in an hour, right? And then your job is just to slowly just build, you know, this pipeline. And before you know it, you're going to get people who are like, you talk to, and then it goes to an appointment and then it goes to the console and then you're out showing homes. And before you know it, you got a deal and contract. So your job, if you don't have, and this goes for everybody, if you don't have a solid five, five people you're working with right now who are looking to buy or sell, five active clients, you need to be prospecting. You should have at least five that you're working with. Some of you guys, like Herbin has like 10 or 15 that he's working on, right? But at the very minimum, you should have a solid five, five people that you're getting close or you're showing homes to, or you're meeting them for an appointment, like five people that who are in the hot category. And your job is just to constantly just fill that five, right? You might close one, you might lose one, someone might cancel, someone might, uh, you know, put things off and you just got to keep, keep putting those five in. Uh, a lot of times we're just not making enough calls or we're not, we're not, we don't have enough people in the pipeline. Um, let's see, Manny, uh, what do you mean by work on believing in our scripts? What's going on, Ricky? Uh, so I tend to take the script and start personalizing myself, and I get a little carried away. I start asking too many questions up front, and some most of those questions uh, I could probably address when I see them on tour. Uh, so I kind of sabotage myself and uh, getting ahead of myself, I guess. So I need to know when to stop, how to be able to present it, and trust in the script, I guess, and uh, go from there. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think part of it is, Manny, you've been in the business for a, for a long time. You have a lot of experience, right? So a lot of times us that have a lot of experience, we want to try to like overqualify and like qualify the, qualify the client, which is not a bad thing, but there's a time and place to do that. I think that's the big, the mental shift, right? Anytime it's a Zillow flex, like there's a certain there's a certain way you got to go about those because you don't want to overqualify them too much in the beginning. And then you end up like talking yourself out of the showing. So, um, and part of it also is to understand that the way people buy and sell nowadays has changed right back in the day when it was more just like face to face and um, you know, everything wasn't online. Then I think, yeah, you definitely want to qualify people more in the beginning, but nowadays when people can just click and go see a property, you got to give them what they want first before you start getting a bunch of info from them. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. and here's the thing is I think this was, cause this was a, this was an issue that I was having up to when we first started like going to this online thing is I didn't want to waste time going out to meet someone if they weren't qualified. But then let's peel that back a little bit. Cause some of you guys may be having the same thing, right? Because it makes sense, right? Like, I got this person, they reached out online, they want to go see a property in Hayward, or they want to go see a property in Fremont, and that's on the other side of town. I don't want to drive all the way out there if they're not even pre-approved, they're not qualified, or anything like that. Like, that makes total sense, right? You want to protect your time. But if you think about that, and you go a little bit deeper with that, what we're doing to ourselves is we're telling ourselves, I don't want to do something unless it's guaranteed. That's really what we're telling ourselves. But is anything guaranteed in this business? Nope, it's not, right? So you got to then go to like, well, if nothing's guaranteed, 
then at least like, what are my ratios, right? Like how can we get the highest ratio, right? Conversion ratio. No one's batting a hundred percent. Like no one goes and shows homes and like converts a hundred percent of the leads that we show. Even if you were to pre-qualify every single client and ask all the right questions and ask all those questions and only go to the ones that are fully qualified, you still wouldn't convert a hundred percent of them because some of them just may not choose to work with you. Some of them may work with another agent. Some of them just may put things on hold. So we got to go to like the pipeline mentality, right? Like my job is to just meet with X amount of people and let the numbers play out on their own. So think about this. If you were to meet with four people a week, four appointments a week, and I want you guys to maybe write this in the chat. If you booked four appointments a week, that's 16 appointments in a month, right? That you booked. Out of those 16 appointments, if you booked 16 appointments in one month, how many you think would actually show up? What would you guys say? Write that in the chat. So you booked 16. Miles wrote 10. Manny wrote 12. Someone wrote 13, 13. Okay. Carlos Optimistic, 16. Alex wrote eight, 12. Okay, 10 to 12. So if you book 16, it's probably about a 70% roughly that you actually end up meeting with. Like those are the numbers, like those are like industry numbers. If you, book, if you book an appointment, you're probably about a 70% uh, you know, set to met ratio, right? Which is about 11. So let's just say 10. Let's just say 10, guys. Because if you look at all those numbers, right? You book 16 appointments, you're actually going to meet with 10 of them. Now, out of those 10 that you meet with, how many of those 10 do you think would be qualified that you can probably convert. If you met with 10 clients, even like if your conversion rate wasn't that good, it was just mediocre, but you met with 10 people who wanted to go look at a home, who were looking to buy, how many do you think you could convert out of those 10? Manny wrote five. That's a 50% conversion. Seven, six, a lot of you guys wrote five, six. Okay. It's actually probably a little bit lower, guys. Like the industry numbers are probably like 30% of the people you meet with, like you have a really good shot at converting them. So if you meet with 10 people, because out of those 10 that you meet with, yeah, some of them may not be qualified. Some of them may put things off. Some of them may just take longer. They may be barely starting their search. But even if we just go like super conservative and you are able to convert three of those and that's three deals a month, right? Three times 12 is 36. If you're making 15 to 20 K commission per deal, like think about those numbers, right? 36, let's say you're making 15,000 bucks per deal. That's over half a million dollars, right? In, in commissions. So the point I'm trying to get at guys is that you're probably only gonna close like 30% of the people you meet with just because those are the, just the numbers. Like you could be really, really good and maybe your conversion rate's a little bit higher or maybe you do certain things that'll push you a little bit higher, but just on a very, very conservative basis, it's like a 30% conversion rate across the board. So I guess the point I'm trying to make guys is you gotta just get in front of more people. Like Manny, like just know that these are the numbers. Like I gotta meet with, if I wanna close three deals a month, I got to book four appointments a week and I got to meet with at least 10 people. Because then you might get one that like refers you to somebody else. You might get one that like they don't qualify, 
but six months later they qualify because they got to get some of their ducks in a row. Um, it's going to be all across the board, right? So no matter what guys, there's nothing is guaranteed in this, but what is guaranteed is like you book in the appointments and then you just trying to line up as many people as possible to meet with. And that's the pipeline game, right? So your job as an agent is to get in front of as many people as possible. So I, I, what I would suggest is you got the leads coming in from these sources, Zillow, whatever it might be. Zillow is the bait, right? The open house, the property that they show up to, that's the bait. That's, that's the carrot that got them to come in. The, the property they clicked on on Zillow or Redfin or whatever website, that's the carrot that got them to come in, right? So you got to play the game. Just book the appointment, give them what they want, get in front of as many people, and then let the numbers fall where they're going to fall. But if you're not getting in front of at least, you know, eight to 10 clients a month, you know, getting in front of eight to 10 clients a month, that's going to get you two to three deals a month. So I think just change the way you look at it, Manny. And then, you know, some of us might be able to benefit from that as well. Just change the way we're looking at it. It's just, my job is just to get in front of people, get in front of people and then go from there. Hey there, Enrique. So uh, you're absolutely right. This last, this past week, I had three new buyers who I spoke to on the phone and, uh, in my mind, I was thinking these, these are going to go nowhere. I'm wasting my time. I'm going to Fremont. I'm going to Newark. But uh, I had a conversation with somebody else, and you know, they basically told me what you meant, you had just said. And of those three people, I converted all three of those. They are getting pre-qualified. They are moving forward, and they're all over a million dollar purchases. So you're absolutely right in regards to that. There you go, man. That's yeah. that's awesome, man. That's solid, super solid right there. Hey, Enrique. Yes. I think one of the biggest takeaway that you said earlier that I want to share with everybody is like, don't stress about semantics. Don't stress about saying the right thing. Don't stress about like, oh, I got to show up to the office and then, you know, stay there for eight hours. And that for me, that's productive work. Not necessarily. I think you should find your own structure, what works for you. Then you will be able to convert and be able to embrace the industry as a, as a whole. So if you're coming in every day at nine, what are the five things or three things that you have to do on your computer bef before you start your work day? And that mindset or that state of being will eventually be like, okay, I know this is the cold lead. This is my warm lead. This is my hot, hot lead. Every day you look at it. So there's no excuse for you to like, oh, I'm going to follow up with this person like two weeks from now. Like, no, you see it every day. So you have to make sure you know what the status is on each client. That's my hot take. <laughs> yeah. And that goes back to... It's not in, in this business, it's not necessarily how much, how many hours, it's how productive you are with your hours, right? Like you can work four hours a day, but super productive where there's no distractions and you're just like checking things off and be a lot more productive than someone who's like eight hours, but then they're on social media, they're chatting the whole time, they go to lunch two times and they go to coffee and they like, they didn't make no calls, you know, and they just hung out right yeah that's that's something i think that a lot of you know new agents should realize is not not come to the office it's great but you have to create your own structure to see okay what will be the most productive things that will generate me income in the next 30 days yeah i that usually that mindset that i have every day is going to be more productive by the end of the week so what miles was saying earlier that he hasn't called anybody yet your phone has maybe 500 database right now that 500 should be in your spreadsheet today and you have to categorize them, which is cold, which is warm, which is hot. And that should be your 20 calls per day. Yep. What I used to do, guys, when I was in uh, heavy in production, and even, even now, like what I do is I try to write down like the five things that I got to do that day. It's a short list, right? Because if you write down like 20 things, like it's, it's real easy to not get those done. If you write down like five, the five most important things you got to do that day, whether it's book an appointment, go show a home, show up to training, whatever you got to do. And you just come in and just knock out those five every single day, four or five days a week. Right. Like you're going to be, cause that's going to all compound. Right. So I would, I would start at this point guys to be a lot more intentional with our time. Right. Like come in with the purpose, show up to the office with the purpose to get certain things done and check them off. And I remember I would just use like a little piece of paper and I would, before I started my day, I would just write down all the things I got to get done. 
And I would try to tackle the hardest ones first because the getting the hardest ones done first, it's like, then it sets the tone for your day. If you say, Hey, I'm going to prospect. And that's the most important one, but you try to do that at the end of the day, then everything else starts to get in the way of that. Right. And the other thing too, is giving yourself a deadline. Like, Hey, I got to knock out these things, but I got to do it by three o'clock. Cause at three o'clock I got to leave. Because if you give yourself eight hours to do something, it's going to take eight hours. If you give yourself three hours, it's going to take three hours, right? Like, it's like when you put that pressure on yourself, you make things happen a lot quicker. So a lot of us, some of you guys are past the stage where you're not brand, brand new no more. Like you're already up and running. This is now the tweak you got to make to just come in and be highly intentional about your time. And don't leave if you didn't get something done. Like if I didn't check all those things off my list, then I'd be like, dude, this was a waste of the day. And then here's the other benefit to that, right? Like if you do check all those things off your list and it's, it's only like three o'clock, you still got the whole rest of the day to go now enjoy your day or go do something fun that you want to do for yourself, right? So that's the other thing about getting in early and knocking things off and you'll be surprised, right? Like you just gave yourself a whole bunch of time back. You don't necessarily have to work eight hours a day uh, in this business, right? You just got to make sure you're getting being productive. Uh, let's take a couple more guys. We're almost wrapping up. Let me see. I see. Um, Some people are asking about BMRs. I know sometimes we're getting BMR leads. So I want to address that. Uh, here's the thing, guys. With the BMR, you got to remember like 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not going to qualify for that BMR. They're not going to buy that BMR. So I would stop worrying about the BMR and more focus on what does that client need and how can I make something work with that client? Right. So when you get these BMR leads or, or the property that they inquired on on Zillow as a BMR, if you can show the place, go show it. It goes back to like what we talked about, Manny, right? Like, don't try to qualify the client right there on the spot. Like, just get in front of the client. Go show it. Let the numbers average out the way they're going to average out. But also set up a couple other properties to show them that are similar to that BMR and go out there and tour at least two or three properties. Because you have someone who wants to buy a home, someone who's looking to get something, right? So I would just go out there, and, but I would take a couple other properties and I would use that opportunity to, to meet with them, to consult them, to explain the way the BMR works, to uh, show them what else is out there, to ask them about their situation. And here's, here's the worst case. The worst case is you go out there and like they just don't qualify for anything. But you now got closer to your averages, right? We talked about how you got to meet with so many people to close two or three deals, right? You got to book 16 appointments. You got to meet with 10 so you can close two or three, right? So that just counted as one of your 10, right? And that just got you closer to the one that's actually going to going to clo close or convert. That's the worst case scenario. You can't close anything. But the best case scenario is you at least went out there and you got to do your pitch in front of somebody. You got to try the pitch out. You got to master your script. You got to show up. You got to put yourself in, in that momentum and that intention. And let's say they don't qualify, but you did such a great job at meeting that client, servicing that client, explaining things to them, giving them the time of day when other realtors may not want to give them the time of day. And now their uncle wants to sell their house or their cousin or their friend. And you now just created a relationship with somebody that is now going to want to refer clients to you or is going to hit you up when they're ready. Diana, what'd you have to add? So I've been getting all the BMRs, like it'll ring and I try to avoid it and I'll just take it just to pretty much, like you said, practice my, um, you know, practice my skills. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I am confusing myself though, because I was trying to go the way like build pipes that I learned that route, but then we have our way. So I was like, shoot, I need to come back together and create, you know, what the route that I'm going to go and use that every time. Because I'm going back to our original, but I was trying to do this other new way of getting more information. But anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there. That's something else. Uh, but my question is, am I making a mistake when I have them on the line and I'm building up rapport, just like, you know, what are you trying to do? And I get the qualifying information right off the bat because it's a BMR. And I'm like, okay, well, so then, you know, there's some requirements. Let me get how many household members, what's your um, annual gross income, your credit score, and how much do you have allocated for your down payment? Is it okay if I'm getting that up front? I wouldn't. I okay. wouldn't do that. I would just... Because I'm blaming it on BMR, right? I'm not like going in like I would on any other regular lead. I show them the property, but it's more of just to get as much information and see how I can help them or if they qualify to bring more properties to show. Well, let me ask you this. Like if someone wanted to buy a condo, are you going to say, hey, um, do you have a pet? Because this place doesn't allow pets. Like, are you 55 or older? Or if they wanted to buy a ranch, have you ever owned a ranch before? Do you know what a well is? Do you know what a septic tank is? Like all these things. Yeah. You're not going to do all that, right? So why are we doing something special for a BMR? Like you just treat this client like any other client, right? Like, hey, what do you like about that? Just follow the script. The ALM. Yeah, I guess I just feel like those and sometimes they run off and then they don't respond anymore, but I'm just trying to build up the pipeline. But okay. And I was curious about that because I got a lot last week, like one after the other. And I was kind of just, you know, trying to get the information and seeing how I could actually help them, I guess. Yeah. I mean, because that's the thing is we got to, we got to go into it with and understand like, this is, this is our job. Our job is to take leads and go meet people and go show them homes and build a relationship. That's our job. It's not to like take a lead and try to see if we can close it right there on the spot because we still don't know if we can, right? Like we've had some that came in for BMR and they ended up buying a condo and they ended up buying a townhouse and we, and we closed the deal. Right. But if we never gave them the time of day, and we started over qualifying them from that initial call, we would have never met them and never been able to take them to go see this condo or townhouse. So I wouldn't over qualify them. Um, what'd you have, Mai? So I also have been, oh, sorry. I also have been seeing um, a lot of BMRs. And for me, I've learned to like pretend like it's not a BMR, like a regular property. And I still book the appointment as if it was like a regular property. And then once the follow-up call, like with the confirmation, I'll let them know that it is a BMR. And I'll ask them if they know what a BMR is. And then I'll go through the qualification and then still trying to get more information and go through the L LP Mama as well. So that's been working for me. Got it. Now, are you now what happens when you go meet them? Have you went and met them? Uh, so I haven't met them, but I end up like booking a consultation for them. Okay. Instead. Well, there you go. You can book the consultation and stuff like that. But it's still we're still going. We're still doing the same thing. We're just doing the. You're still doing this in two calls, basically. Right. Yeah. So I don't think that's the good way to do it because there's not there's not going to be anything like getting in front of someone live in person. Right. You, you can't show BMRs though, like that mm -hmm. easily, right? You have to have either an app in appointment, be qualified or whatever, but, and then the price point, cause I've looked obviously to say, oh, let me bring up something else. What do you like most about the house? I like price point. Well, usually those are the lowest price points and the rest are like over a hundred, you know, hundred more. So I, I don't look at them like it's a negative thing at all. I don't mind. I want to talk to as many people as I can. So I don't look at it like that at all. I don't look at them as like not an opportunity. And Enrique, you know that I have one client that I put in offers last week and we're hopefully going to do one today. He hasn't won. He's in second place um, for the other two offers, but he was a BMR. So yeah, I'm not worried about that. And, and that's the thing, guys, you got to take, you got to take what you can, right? Like you're going to get some that are BMR. You're going to get one that's a $2 million lead, right? So it's at the end of the, at the end of the day, like if you close the deal, the money is green on the, on the BMR or the condo or the $2 million deal. It all adds to the bottom line. And remember, if you're thinking long-term in this business, that BMR client, here's what can happen. Let's say they're, they're a low price point. They only could qualify for a $500,000 condo. But now that person now starts referring you to other people at their work, at their, their friends, their family, who turn out to be million dollar buyers, 1.5 million, a listing and all that stuff. So you got to understand that every single person you add to your world is just going to be part of your database going forward. 
That's someone that you can now invite to our next client event who's going to become a raving fan of yours. And that's the job we're trying to do, right? We're trying to take these cold leads, nurture them, make them warm, deliver a great experience, right? And then let them now be your biggest uh, fan, right? The person that's going to continue to promote you and refer people to you. So remember, like when you can just detach yourself from the outcome and like just service people at a high level, people aren't going to forget that, right? But when you're like, oh, you're BMR, like you kind of already, like you have a wall up. Now, if you can't get them in the property, so let's say this, because let's play this out. Let's say you can't get them in the property because they have to fill out an application and all that stuff. Then what do you do? What are you doing, Diana? What I do, so what I do is like, you know what? We need to jump on a Zoom. I, I set them all on a Zoom appointment. Like that day, I set them all for that day. I said, let's look at what the requirements are. Let's see if you qualify and let's let's have a lender on and we just qualify what they really qualify for. You know, some they do qualify for a little more and if the payment's comfortable and some they have like no chance, right? But I just set the appointment, buyer consultation. Yeah, so there you go. You can set the buyer consultation, right? Or what you can do also is you can say, hey, look, it looks like for this particular property, you got to jump through a bunch of hoops before we can see it. But you know what? I pulled up two other properties that are like similar, right? Maybe we should just go meet at these. Why don't you check these out? I know you're probably going to want to see a couple properties. At least I get to meet you. You get to meet me. And I'll kind of be able to sit down with you there and kind of walk you through some of the process, right? Um, so remember, the BMR got them to come in, but maybe the BMR is not available to show unless they do all these steps, I would book two other, two other properties and just go out and show, show homes to them, right? You spend an hour out there showing homes. Now you have a new person that you just met that is part of your database. And then from there, determine if they are a good candidate, if they need to jump on a consult. The same way you would do, like, let's say someone inquired on a, let me ask you this. If someone inquired on a $2 million home, and then you're like, all right, great. I booked the appointment. And then you call the seller or the agent and you find out it just went pending. What would you do at that point? Act like you didn't know that and just go. <laughs> Either that or you're going to, you're going to say like, Hey, there's two other properties, right? That just went up. Hey, it looks like this one's not available. There's two other ones, right? When you go to the shoe store and you try to buy a pair of shoes, right? I've used this analogy before. You go in, you go in the shoe palace or whatever, and you're like, hey, can I get this in a size, size, whatever? They go in the back, and when your shoe is not available, what do the, what does the shoe guy do? What do they do when they come back out? They bring out a second pair. They bring out a second pair, right? Because here's the thing. They bring out a second pair or they bring out a pair like in a bigger size or a, a one size smaller, right? Or they bring out a, a pair, but in a different color or they bring out two other pairs, right? So you didn't get the one you wanted, but I don't have the white ones, but I got them in black and I got them in blue and I have your size or, hey, I don't have your size, but I got the next size up and I have an insole that you can put in, you know, so they're not all big on you. Because here's the thing. I guarantee you there's a study that if they just bring out product, you're going to end up buying one of those, right? The chances of them buying something just shot up dramatically versus you come back out. Sorry, I don't have those shoes for you. Oh, okay, no problem. I'm going to go to a different store now. So you guys got to think like the Foot Locker, the Shoe Palace mentality of like, if that property is not available, that doesn't mean they don't want to buy a home. That just means that particular shoe wasn't available. You got to bring out two other shoes, bring a different color, bring a different size, bring something that's similar, right? Your job is to, is to show them property. And through that, you'll be able to meet them and discover a little bit more about them and ask the right questions and build that connection and build the rapport. And the next thing you know, they're buying this other home. We've had clients that inquire on a, a million dollar home and then you go show them that home and then it turns out they didn't like it because most of the times they're not going to like the first home they see. And then they end up saying, you know what? Um, we're going to add on, uh, my cousin's going to jump in with me. And now we're buying a $2 million home instead of a $1 million home. I remember Harold had a client where they got qualified for a million and then they came back a month later and they increased their budget to 1.8 million. 
right? So it's the numbers game, guys. We just got to get in front of people. Get in front of people, build those relationships, and then the chips will fall how they're going to fall. Let's see. Let's see, we got one more. Um, but I know we've been getting a lot on those BMRs, so I think it's good that we address that. Let me see what else we got. We're almost up on time. Um, well, I'm going to talk about one real quick. Well, give me like five minutes, guys. You guys got five minutes for me? All right. Because someone wrote in there that they're having a problem with posting on social media. And I know that's a, a problem for a lot of us. Um, I want us to think about the most common questions you're getting from people right now, or the most common concerns you're getting from people, or the most common problems that people are having, right? Like when it comes to posting on social media, I think a lot of times people get hung up. There's two reasons people get hung up with. They're, they don't like how they look in front of the camera, right? Or they're, they're worried about how they're gonna sound. The only way around that is just to do it, right? It's the same thing like I told Miles about making the calls, right? If you haven't got the calls down yet, it's because you haven't made enough calls. You're gonna to have to go through that phase where you butcher a bunch of things and you just do your best so that you can get better each time, right? So right off the bat, if, if you're not posting on social media and you're more concerned like with how you sound and how you look, by you not posting, that's not gonna make you any better, right? Like the only way you're gonna get better is by just saying, hey, you know what? I'm willing to get uncomfortable because I know this is a crucial part of my business. And if I got to butcher a couple of videos or if I got to like go through this learning phase, I'm going to do it because that's going to get me one step closer to building my brand. And then the other part of, so that's one part of why a lot of people don't post. The other part is content, right? Is we don't know what to post. So we're too busy trying to think of how to create content instead of just documenting content, right? So I want to share a concept is called documenting versus creating. Creating is like you sitting there and you thinking of like, I'm going to come up with this cool idea and like this cool video. That's, that's kind of difficult, right? Like if you're not a creative person for you just to create something out of thin air, it's, it's pretty difficult, right? A lot of people don't have that creative bone in them. So I want you guys to pivot from creating to just documenting what you're already doing, right? When you think of documenting, then you can just easily think about like, okay, who did I talk to today? And what questions did they have? Like the BMR thing. We just talked about BMR right now, right? That's part of what you learned today or what you talked about, right? That's a perfect idea or per perfect thing to make a video about. What's a BMR? How do they work, right? What are some of the misconceptions people have about BMRs? Um, or you just talk to a buyer, you just talk to a seller, like whatever it might be, like what's one of the questions that they had or one of the concerns they had, or what's a story? What's a cool story of someone you actually helped and, and what happened, right? Like, so it's just documenting what you're already doing. When you switch to documenting, it's a lot easier to come up with stuff because just think of what you're already doing and the conversations you're already having with people, right? So, I mean, number one, you're gonna have to get uncomfortable. That's just the bottom line, right? If you've never been in front of the camera, you're gonna to have to put yourself out there and there's gonna be an uncomfortable face, right? You're gonna to have to just jump in. But if you have already like some things that you can talk about because you've, you're just thinking of your day and you're thinking of the conversations you're running into, it's a lot easier because now you're not having to just create this thing out of thin air. You have an actual piece of content. Like you have something that is documented. What I do guys is I literally have, I don't know if you guys can see that, but video topics, it's a note in my phone and there's literally like, 
you see all the ones, like I'm checking off all the ones that I do. Like, I really just think like this conversation right now, right now, when I, when I'm done, I'm going to like go back and think of like, shoot, what are some of like the main points that we talked about today? And what, how can I turn that into a video? Right. Like I'm going to talk about how miles, like maybe like how he needs to set a number for the day. Right. Or Carla gave some really good advice of like, what are the most dollar, you know, dollar productive activities you can do? Like, that's something that it, I don't have to create it. It's like something that we actually just talked about, right? But that's going to be valuable to any other agent listening out there, right? Same thing for you guys. What's something we just talked about? Like the rates. Yesenia just posted about the rates. That's a video right there you can create. So I want you guys to, number one, know where to get the information from because I think that that's, that's half the battle right there. If you know what to post and you know how to use like these real life situations, that's really going to be effective with your audience, guys. Like the real conversations, the real things that you're learning, the real insight that you have on the market, the certain thing that you noticed today when you went and looked at homes or the certain thing that you pointed out to a buyer when you were showing them a home. Like now I want to share this with the other people. Um, But guys, we need to really step our game up on documenting our process. Like we have a whole wealth of knowledge in our office and there's only very, very few people who are utilizing social media as powerful as it is. Um, we're relying too much on like Zillow leads and all that stuff, which is, which is good. You're going to work those leads, but you got to go out there and you got to get your own business and social media is the way that you're going to get it. Um, Thomas Roscoe, I've, I've watched some of your videos, bro. Like awesome videos, a lot of property tours, stuff like that. Um, Diana, I saw you post a video about a story of, of a client that you were working on and a, a, a conversation that you just had. Um, awesome stuff. Like it's, it's a real life thing. Yeah. Just need to make more is what Thomas said. But real quick, who's up to make a video today? Raise your hand if you're up to make a video today. Cause I'm gonna make a video today. So let's take like two minutes and then we're done. What's something that you've already learned today that might be valuable to someone watching, to your audience, to someone who's thinking about buying, selling, or even someone who's thinking about getting into real estate. Remember through EXP, you can also attract agents to come join our team or join you and you can still profit from that, right? So it doesn't always have to just be buying or selling, right? It can also be things that are gonna help other agents because when you help other agents, here's the other thing too. Sometimes we're looking to like, just only speak to the consumer. Like we're only trying to put a message out that would relate to a buyer or a seller. But remember, like there's other agents in other areas who would love to refer clients to you, right? So if you put a message out there that helps another agent or another colleague, that may turn into a referral or that may turn into an opportunity where they want to join the team or they want to join you at EXP and they're in your downline, right? So it's not only putting out like tips for buying and selling. It could just be tips that are things that are working in your business and that helps someone and that gives someone value. So in the chat, guys, what are you going to make a video about today? What's something if you have to think about like what you've learned so far from the, from the start of your day till now that stood out to you that you think would be valuable to someone else? See, joining PRG, misconception of BMR, BMR requirements. If you haven't done a market update, guys, 
I know last time we trained on that, like a market update is a perfect thing to do. Like that should be a staple in your videos at least once a month. Market yourself in unconventional ways. Use your pets. Solid five people in my hot category. Get in front of as many people as possible and convert. Pet video. There you go. Miles has his doggy. So because I'm, I'm often marketing towards agents, right? Like to try to build our team and attract people to our, our company. I'm going to make a video about how most agents disqualify BMR leads or disqualify leads up front because they don't think it's a good lead and why they're missing out on the opportunity. That's what my video is going to be about. Like don't judge the book by its cover, right? All right, guys, that's all we got today. Hope you guys got some nuggets out of this today. I'm looking forward to seeing some videos. Please tag me in your videos. If you make a video, tag me and I'll reshare it and repost it so it, gets, so it reaches more people, right? Um, and that's the other thing too. Like all you guys, as you post videos, like give each other some props, right? Like if Jessica posts a video and it was a good video, like share that on your story too. Right, because it's, please share Michael's video. Yeah, reshare. He, his video blew up. I posted at ten today, and it's like at nineteen thousand views with a hundred something likes. Oh damn! Okay, I gotta see that one. I'm gonna reshare that for sure. Remember, like even sharing someone else's video is another way to keep people to keep you top of mind, right? Because because then people are always coming to you for like good information. Uh, all right, guys, have a great day. Let me know if you need anything. See you at the team meeting tomorrow. Let's get it.